Hello and welcome to another video and in this video it's time to do the legs for the next exoskeleton for the Powered Armoured Exoskeleton Project. Now the legs is technically the first thing I ever made when it comes to exoskeletons because a few years ago now I made my own knee braces. Knee braces like these. However, these are made out of aluminium and while they work well as knee braces and fit excellently and are the basis for this exoskeleton design, Aluminium isn't strong enough, so I'm going to have to be making these out of carbon fibre, in which case we're going to be using some 3D printed moulds to do that. I'm going to need to thicken up certain parts of this design, add some more bolt holes up here to allow for some extra fixings, extend this piece at the ankle so I've got an attachment point for the boots, and also make a bolt mounting point for the armour plane to fit onto on the thigh. There is bolt mounting points under here as well. I also need to modify the hinge system to allow for an actuator to be mounted onto the side. Once this is made, we'll of course be trying them on and seeing how they fit. So without further ado, we'll go into CAD and to take a look at the design. Oh, and before I forget, please like and subscribe. And here we have the leg design. So if we zoom on down to the lower part of the leg, you can see the shin piece here. We've got the bracket extensions on the bottom of the shin to allow for the ankle pieces to be mounted on. And then if we scroll on around, we've got these hoop holes for the Velcro straps to attach on as well. This shin piece, while a complicated shape, is actually symmetrical on both sides, which does simplify it a little bit. And then if we move on up to the inner knee hinge, this is machined out of flat carbon fibre. It is adjustable up and down on the bolt holes and does have a leg lock limit built into the system to stop you overextending your knee. The two actual hinge brackets here that pivot around each other will be made out of three millimetre carbon fibre, while the actual leg lock limit bracket highlighted here will be made out of five millimetre carbon fibre. The spacing works out because there'll also be a little rubbing washer between the two hinging pieces. So the entire hinge will be all nice and flush once it's put together. Then moving on to the quad, at this angle you can see those hoops for the Velcro straps at the bottom as well. And then if we rotate round, we can also see the bolt holes on the top of the quad that will allow for the armour to be mounted to. I also want to keep these big holes in the design that also existed on the knee braces, just because it allows for a nice amount of airflow to go through, helps stop the sweat from building up and will generally keep the operator cool, especially as with the armour mounted over the top, you will have a nice gap for a nice channel of air to run through. While we're in this rotation, we'll just take a quick look at that gap that is on the outer side of the knee. The reason for that gap is just because this allows for bolt heads and the hub drive of the actuator that's going to sit in that place to fit nicely and not to clash. Which, if we now zoom into that hinge, you can see how the actuator will fit on and how the hub drive will fit into the middle. I'm actually trying to make sure that I keep the bolt pattern and general bracketry about the same size as they were on my knee braces just because I knew it all worked really well. But lastly on this CAD design, we then move up to where the hips attach. This is gonna be quite a long piece. So this is gonna be five millimeters of carbon fiber. Can be made thicker in the future, may need to be offset. We'll go over that later on as you'll understand the predicament when I attach it onto the pelvis pieces from previous videos. But as I'm sure most of you have worked out, these aren't the 3D printed moulds, so we'll go over to the other CAD file and take a look at the pieces that need to be 3D printed to be used as moulds. Starting off with the simpler shape, we've got the two quad pieces. While these are pretty basic in shape, I am trying to make sure I get all the indentations into the moulds in the hope that this comes out easier on the carbon fibre and it's easier to cut out the holes, easier to drill the holes. However, how steep and deep I can have the ridge lines for these indentations while allowing for the carbon fiber to actually sit in the indentations and grooves correctly, I'm not sure. So there may be a little bit of trial and error here. I'm hoping regardless, I'll be able to clean it up and make them look nice at the end. And then if we pass on through to the shin pieces, these I'm having to print in two pieces. It's largely more of the same, only this is a much more complicated shape, much more curves involved. Again, with the same issue of how tall these indentations and grooves and everything can be. But regardless of whatever finish might come out here, I'm pretty sure I'll be learning things, which makes it okay. With that heavy amount of waffling done, we'll get these molds 3D printed and we'll get the flat pieces of carbon fiber cut out, ready to assemble. I did have a bit of a thought before printing the 3D printed molds and decided to 3D print those primary pieces seen in the first CAD design just to make sure that they definitely match up to the aluminium knee braces that I made. Part of this reason was the aluminium knee braces were made from just flat sheet hand formed. 
so I did want to make sure I had these CAD designs perfectly modelled, which they turned out pretty well as you can see when I have them next to the knee braces. This also gives me some lines to trim up to in case those indentations haven't worked correctly and the carbon fibre hasn't gone into the grooves and I need to match them up essentially physically and mark it up by hand. Now that was checked off, it was time to finally 3D print those moulds. Quite big moulds, so it took quite a while to do, but here are the results. Starting off with the quad pieces, they came out pretty nice, smooth inside. However, those ridge lines do actually look pretty deep now they're actually in person and not on the CAD file. But nevertheless, they do look like they'll work. Hopefully, I won't have too many problems. For a release agent, I'm going to use wax. I always find this better because you can physically see the layer build up, which you can't always do with other release agents. And while a cloth or duster of some kind works well for the flat pieces, I've also found that a toothbrush works really well for getting that wax into the little grooves, which are certainly needed for these moulds. When it came to the shins, I did realise I had a couple of little flaws in my 3D printing. Must have been something wrong with the shelling in a couple of places on the CAD design. So I did just have to use some filleting wax to fill in the gaps, as you can see here. But that shouldn't be too much of a problem. And now they're all waxed up and ready to go. It's time to lay in the carbon fibre. When it comes to hand laminating carbon fibre, techniques do tend to vary person to person, depending on what tutorial and who you're looking at. I always find laying some resin into the mould first, try to get it into all the gaps before you lay the first weave down helps a lot. And it also helps you to work out how the weave is going to lay. And this is when I did start to see how it was going to be quite difficult to get the resin really into the corners here. Really make sure that the resin is staying in long enough and staying up in the corners of this mould because it does go vertical to allow you to actually sit the weave in and really press the weave through the resin. So I just had to be as careful as possible as I went on to make sure that I was pushing the weave and the resin into all the corners, taking more care than usual. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't film much more of actually laying the carbon fibre into the moulds purely because I don't really have the filming capacity to do it. If I'm going to do a time lapse or something, obviously need quite a lot of memory. And when you're handling the epoxy, I don't really want to touch the camera or phone or anything as you can understand, but I did just want to bring up something. And that is, if you ever want to do something with carbon fiber, don't be put off thinking that you need all of the resin infusion, the pre-preg, curing ovens, all of this to actually have a go at you can still hand laminate it. The reason why it still works is that any carbon fiber, even if it's not perfect and flawed, tends to be stronger than other materials like aluminium. So even imperfect carbon fiber is still better. Also, when it comes to the cost of doing things out of carbon fibre, while the carbon fibre weave is expensive, you also need to make sure you get good epoxy. You can do it with very little tooling, which can actually make it cheaper than doing metal work if you're not a fabricator, if you actually need to go out and buy welders and benches and other fabrication equipment. Carbon fibre can actually be cheaper to do so. You can also machine carbon fibre very effectively on a cheap desktop CNC machine. And again, you can use 3D printers that you can now pick up pretty cheap as moulds if required. And you can just make moulds the old fashioned way, which is typically what I've done in the past. I do want to highlight two sources that I found particularly helpful over the years. One is Easy Composites. This is a company in the UK. They have a fantastic YouTube tutorial series of doing carbon fibre in various different ways. And they've been doing this for years. So there's plenty of content there. And they are also the ones that I buy most of my stuff from, in particular the epoxy resin, because if you buy a cheap epoxy resin, it can basically screw the whole thing up for you. Another guy I've learned a lot from is a guy called Mike Patey on YouTube. He builds bush planes out in America, modifies them, kind of makes one-offs. In particular, I'd highlight his Scrappy series. This is where he took a Piper Cub bush plane and then modified it completely, largely with scrap parts, although obviously new carbon fibre. Because he was making it a one-off and not as a production line, and he was doing some very large pieces of carbon fibre, he did things in kind of scrappy ways, if you will. All of which ended up getting a fantastic result, so if you want to have a go at carbon fibre, I suggest looking at some of his videos, and you can see how you can do it without needing all of the equipment. Now, I've mentioned that we'll see what they came out like in the mould, and we'll get them cut down and trimmed up and see how it all looks. The first step of this is some satisfying peel ply removal. Then I got these sharp edges trimmed off, ready to be demolded, which they actually came out pretty well. 
on one of the shim pieces that you can see here you can see how it did hang on to part of the 3d printer mold but to be honest that's not a big deal it's easy enough to break those off and 3d printer molds can be sacrificial it does at this point look as well like it's worked pretty well in the indentations and in the grooves like it shouldn't need too much cleaning up but regardless i thought i'd better tape around all of the lines just to make sure i know exactly where i'm cutting with the dremel and with the grinder so that i can get all of this excess carbon fiber cut off and if we fast forward through time, you can see here how they taped up and how I've cut the holes out, which at least at this point they are finally starting to come to shape. But unfortunately, this is where the mistakes that I'd made start to become clear. Once I took the tape off these, you can start to see where the carbon hadn't sat in those indentations, in those groove lines perfectly all the way around, and where there was flaws all the way around the edges, where it was either too curved or not curved enough. So I decided just to clean these up the best I can at the minute, knowing that I'll probably replace them later on to make sure this whole suit is as perfect as possible. After a quick sigh of general disappointment and frustration, I thought I'd better move on to the other carbon fiber parts and get these outer knee hinge brackets built up with the mock-up elastic actuators fitted and then get those slotting hinging pelvis points fitted onto the actuators and then onto the carbon fiber brackets that you can see now. Then all that was left was to get the slimline inner knee hinges built up together with the rubbing washer, the sleeve shoulder washers, nicely bolted together with the sleeve nuts, and then get all these parts bolted all together and see how the legs actually fit. And here we have them built up and complete. This is the only place I could film it. Sorry about the audio, I am getting a new microphone soon. But yeah, I did finally get them built up with the mock-up elastic actuators on. I haven't put any elastic in them because I thought it might be difficult to actually play with and set up for the camera. But we've got the inserts for the hips mounted on as well. We've got the strapping on the back. And you can see now the leg lock function pretty well there. You've got a nice degree of movement, certainly at least squatting to parallel. All made out of carbon fibre. The only thing that I haven't done so far, as you can probably just about tell, is I haven't lined the inside of these with foam yet. And the reason for that is if we come in closer, you can see the problem. So from far away, the carbon on the main part of the legs doesn't look too bad. But as we get closer, you can see it is pretty rough. It's rough around these edges here, just basically where the carbon didn't sit into the mold properly in the indentations. In hindsight, what I should have really been doing is not having the indentations anyway, and then just cutting them out in post. Reason for that is I ended up doing that anyway by taping them up and then cutting them out because the line that was created wasn't quite perfect enough. So having these kind of fold overs has created more work than it would have been just to cut them out separately. So in future, I do need to basically make a mold that is just flat all the way across and then cut them out in post. The indentations worked really well for selecting the holes. However, I did make the indentations actually too big so that when I drilled through it, you can kind of see how there's still part of the bevel edge. It's not a clean cut. Once I realized that this wasn't going to be too good, I did stop with trying to sand it perfectly, just clear coated it as it is for now. I will say I very almost delayed this video further and redid these pieces because I really do want them to be perfect on this suit. However, I realized I don't fully know if this is gonna be the right thickness of carbon fiber. So this has come out around 2.5 millimeters thick. I've used six layers of carbon fiber. However, while there needs to be a little bit of flex in it, I think there might be too much flex in this. The problem is I can't really tell until I get the armor plates mounted onto this to see how much it flexes with the extra weight on it. So as unpretty as these look, I'm gonna keep these for now, do all the testing with these and make sure they're correct. With this plan established, it's time to actually try these things on and see how they fit. I've just got the leg pieces on, so I thought I'd do some Cloverfield shaky camera work. You can see how they do fit pretty well despite being rough. They also fit in pretty good around jeans, quite comfortable. You can see the hip actuator position is actually pretty good. You can see how your leg kind of goes in a bit at your waist, so there is kind of room for this, but again, I assume I'm going to have to extend this out a little bit. It is just a shame about this finish because if not, these would have been pretty near perfect. As you can see, all in carbon fibre, it all looks pretty good. We've even got the actuator position. Looks pretty good for the knee. It all moves all pretty well. Now we can just slide the hips in. Now we're locked in. Now chaps, slide 
problem which has uh, scuffered my plans for trying on the full exoskeleton. So, there were some 3D printed parts, some of you may remember in one of the earlier episodes that I needed to replace with carbon. Well, I haven't got around to them and they are finally let go. Which, on the plus side, does mean I'm going to be forced to replace these parts of carbon fibre for the next video. However, it does mean I can only actually put on half the exoskeleton, unfortunately now. But nevertheless, we'll zoom out and take a look at the legs and with the hip pieces and lower spine pieces on. And here we have them on, linked into the hip pieces. You can see how they do fit pretty well onto the legs. The bolt holes also look pretty well in line going from top to bottom, so that should make it easier for the fitment of the armour. I'm overall very pleased with how the shape came out. It's just a shame that they do look rough in these places. They fit well with jeans on, which is always a plus. You can also see, hopefully from this angle, you do have a little bit of a gap on the side of the actuator to allow for the bracketry. Again, I think they are going to have to come out a little bit. As for how it attaches to the hips, if we look from the side view, you can see how the actuator is a little bit too far forward, maybe an inch or so. But at the same time, the back plate, as seen in a previous video, is basically too close to the glutes so it catch when you're running, for example. So I actually think this will all be correct if I just space this block out of the back and make the necessary gap required. That should then bring the actuator back in line with my actual hit point. As for length, I actually think it's about right. It looks roughly where it is, it's just a little bit too far forward. As for deflection on the knee, it's pretty good. And maneuverability, it's in general pretty good that way. I can just feel it pulling a little bit on the hips because they're not set perfectly. Certainly maneuverable enough, certainly fit well enough. They also weigh next to nothing. The heaviest parts of these is the bearings and the actuators. The things with the thickness of the carbon fibre in these, I'd actually say I've got the thickness correct for a knee brace or just for an exoskeleton on its own. I still think that they're possibly a bit too thin for the fact that they're going to have to carry out. Something I saw in the comments a video or two ago was can you sit down in the exoskeleton with the back pieces and everything. So we'll have a good look. And even with the hips not set correctly, you can sit in it fine. The hip pieces at the back actually act pretty good as like a backrest and you shouldn't have a problem with the weight of the armour over the top of it because if you're sitting down, that back hip bracket will basically act as like a seat for the armour so you won't suddenly have the weight of the armour on you because you're sitting down. So it does work pretty well for that. Thankfully, I did take some extra footage actually zoomed out so you can see the bottom of the legs. And here you can see how it does actually move pretty well all around your ankles. Stays pretty tight and you can get in kneeling down positions not too bad. Bearing in mind it'll be a lot better when the hips are set properly. Lastly, it's time to go over what is next in this series. So, what's next indeed? Next up, it's time to do the boots and the soles, and then I'll be able to try the full suit on and give it a good test. Of which, when those boots are on with the ankle fittings and everything, I'll be able to adjust all of the hips and everything. I should have the new carbon fibre pieces to replace the broken 3D printer parts out of the top of the exoskeleton. Then I'll be able to do some proper mobility checks and make sure it all fits correctly. And then I have a new actuator design that I'm working on, which actually looks pretty promising. I'm also starting the robot series pretty soon as well with a robot hand. So please like and subscribe if you haven't. So with all that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope to see you in the next one. And last of all, have a great day.